Very few car companies can claim that they have been around for a hundred years. This is one of them, Aston Martin. Built on the site of an old RAF airbase in Gaydon, the new home for Aston Martin was built in 2003 and is one of the top three best looking car factories in the world. What are the other two? The McLaren Technology Center and of course, Volkswagen's transparent factory. But it's important to remember that Gaydon is not where the legacy of Aston Martin started. This new modern factory matches the elegant design of the cars produced within its walls, but the company's roots come from a different town an hour away. Obviously, showroom opened May last year. Okay. Uh, after a 11 month development. Um, this is, service department's been here since the mid-60s um, and always as part of the manufacturer itself. Obviously the decision was made uh, that we should retail cars as well uh, and this is the retail department of Aston Martin. So new showroom open, completely corporate, beautiful as you can see. It matches the same architecture as... Absolutely, corporate yeah. identity for Aston Martin to exact uh, yeah. standards. So this is... Modern, modern vehicle workshop. Okay. So, um, we look after all vehicles from late model DB7 in this workshop through to new Vanquish and 177. Okay. Um, so it, these are customer cars? All of these are customer cars, really? yes, okay. very much so. Over here is what we call the flight deck area, which is vehicles that are finished, ready for handover uh, or collection from the customers. In here we have nine qualified technicians. We look after last year 2,600 Aston Martins okay. in a year. Um, That's quite a lot. It's, it's a huge amount, but this is the biggest Aston Martin technical facility in the world. What about in terms of, you know, it's not only just basic service, but you could do everything here. Everything on, if you want something done to your Aston Martin, as long as it's safe and it's legal, we'll do it for you. At the moment we have two Vanquish, original Vanquish in that we're doing manual conversions to. So we've done over 90 of those now. I, um, that, that's become a very big thing. Yes, very much so. Of, uh, in terms of taking the Vanquishes, which didn't initially come with manual transmission. Nope, no, it was automatic transmission, paddle shift. And a lot of, and, and so it's a certified change. Change to stick shift, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so we've got one from Australia and one from the Netherlands at the moment. Um, we're into the 90s now, and we usually do four or five a year. That's very impressive. So, and that keeps coming. We did two in North America last year. Yeah, I've, I actually know someone who owns a Vanquish in, in the States, and he's thinking about doing just that. Still. Oh, you got my card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in here is the paint and uh, body shop, uh, panel shop. So this side is um, what we call MET or, or mechanical. So that's strip and rebuild, as you can see on the Vanquish over uh, the repeat over there. Sorry, um, the guys will take strip the cars completely. If there's any panels that need to be cut out and replaced, uh, bonded, uh, that will be done in here. Um, then the cars will go through and be painted, and then they'll come back out here after the panels are polished and we'll rebuild it. So you can see there's a pre-war over there. Yeah. which um, we've replaced the rear end of that car. Unfortunately, it was, uh, was rear-ended in an accident. That's had front fender, both rear fenders, and a rear panel replaced. So this is pre-war? Yeah. Where do you get information on fixing such a car? How do you even start Reference with Reference libraries, speaking with uh, people who have had the experience and knowledge, especially when it comes to taking the car apart. You know, they're relatively easy to come apart in comparison to the cars next to it. Yeah. Um, when it comes to making the panels, um, it's all down to the craftsmen that work here. They're actually uh, doing it themselves. And, you'll and see it very looking, shortly. Looking at reference photos, pictures, Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and just taking it from there. Yeah, yeah. It's and incredible. Then, uh, right hand drive to left hand drive conversion. No here. way. So, okay. you know, changing the bulkhead for the uh, wiper spindles and the white washers. Um, that seems like a lot of work for not much change. <laughs> It's down to the owner's preference. Understood, okay. All right. uh, well, that shows that you'll do anything. Uh, absolutely. 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 Anything. And you can see in here that, you know, uh, you've got the V8, you've got a Rapid S, and you've got a pre-war, all, yep. all part next to each other. So oh. that just shows the diversity that we can do here. Supercharged Vantage, full color change. 
Well, oh, so people who just want to have their car color changed, you'll do it? Yep, um, this, this uh, owner, we're doing a full color change, engine rebuild, new interior, but we're also putting into it an upgraded six-speed automatic transmission. So cool. going away from the original one, we're, we're, we've developed, uh, using the same factory techniques, a six-speed automatic transmission for V8 two-valve and supercharged Vantage. Correct me if I'm wrong, it was initially a four-speed back then. Correct. So that's, that's such an, so you're actually developing the trans, or you're not developing the transmission, but you're adapting it to this car. We, we've developed a, an existing transmission to fit the vehicle and then made sure that the um, valve bodies and so on are matched to the car. So we've tested it in Nardo, we've tested it in Sweden, we've tested it in, in the Middle East. So we've gone through the full test program to make sure that it's compliant as you would do a new production yeah, model. Yeah, it's not just bolting it in, you're actually no. going through the whole procedure making Absolutely. sure it's right for the customer. Well, you have to you have to match the gearbox to the car. Of course. As well. I see a DB2 front end right over there. You certainly do. This is a uh, DB2 body that we've just um, Three quarters of the way through a restoration, so we've now blacked the interior, painted the exterior. The guys are now doing flat and polish. Once the paint's perfect, it will be taken down to the chassis, and I'll show you the chassis. That's um, a big project. That's in build. But no, no, this is how we work on every restoration. Everything is stripped back to every nut and bolt. If it's not, if it's there's too much corrosion or it's not safe or not serviceable, we'll replace it. We have to. Um, and then that's what you end up with. As you can see, there's the. The There's the nose for it, and that's been pre-fitted, as you can see, with the trim. Once we're happy with the trim, that will be taken off, sent away, and re-chromed. And how long of a project would this take? Each restoration is about 14 months. 14 months? 12 to 14 months. And that's standard across any vehicle? For the most pretty part. much, yeah. Pretty much. It depends on, obviously, the base car. If you've got a car which is um, particularly heavily corroded or the customer wants something unique uh, in the specification, then yes, it may take a little longer. But we aim to... 12 to 14 months per restoration. Um, but obviously at the moment, we've, we've got a waiting list um, going into mid-2014. So this is the panel shop. We opened this January this year. Uh, nine guys in here. Um, we still have all the original body bucks, so V8 two valve, DB5. Um, this is what's left of a DB5 chassis. And as you can see, this That's is my usable. prime example of, of when it's not usable. You can see that it's wafer thin. So we made him a new one. <laughs> That's a chassis from... That's a DB5 chassis, hand-built by my two. And but, Eddie, where, where, are the, where are the jigs coming from? Are you creating, not, your, you're is, creating your the, own jig? If you look at all the measurements on the bulkhead, yeah. the guys will mark out every single part of the car and dismantle it panel by panel by panel, taking all the measurements. They then make, take the measurements over onto a modern jig yep. and then we'll make it. So you'll start with the side beams and then you'll do the cross members, then you make the floor pans, then you make the uprights, then you make the wheel arches and all of it's done by millimetre precision. Same. DB4 convertible here, again, you can see that at some point somebody decided to put a power hood in it and cut the chassis out. Mm -hmm. That's the main support for the rear end. Mm -hmm. um, that's the condition of the tin worm. Oh man. So again, we'll do something very similar with that. It's such a weird thing to see. Well, to, see in a, to see it in a, in, a, in a raw form. Like I've seen them, but to see them with nothing in it, it's, a, it's almost surreal. Yeah, and you can see here with the chassis, every single part of the chassis that was bent or corroded that we couldn't straighten, we cut out and replaced. But we're only replaced what we have to. So that trailing arm is not new, but the back end and the cross members down there are. So that's exactly what we're saying. We'll only replace what we have to replace. As you see, this is the original body box that the cars are made from new. And he just hand beats it. Hand beats it or rolls it. But you can see here where all the different panels are brought together, including up to the bulkhead. Well, it's and almost it's safe to say that not every DB5 or anyone, any, any process like this, they're not always identical. They're a little None odd. of them are identical. Yeah. None of them. Part of this is, as you can see, you've always got the overlap. So that's where the engine base, so that will be folded in. That's where you're going to have the scuttle panel. You always overcut it so you can fit it into the vehicle. Got it. It's not like a modern car where you can buy a new panel off the shelf and just bolt it's it on. It. it doesn't work like that. It never has done. It was only when um, original Vanquish was built that you actually had, for the first time after mine, had body panels that were interchangeable. Yeah. Before that, it was this. And we worked very hard, um, especially Kingsley, has worked very, very hard to develop this business um, over the last 30 years. Um, it shows. And you know, this is the final stage of the operational side. So this is the Heritage Workshop, which we're nigh on finished on. Um, you've got a 1925 <laughs> uh, car here that um, we look after for the owner. 
Um, been in the museum for about <coughs> seven, eight years. Owner said he wants to now drive it, so we brought it in, got it started. Now we fixed where the water leaks, the oil leaks, yeah. the Typical coolant leaks. Things, yeah. Interesting one, yeah. DB4 Mark V. So this is the last of the DB4s before the DB5 started. You saw the body for the DB2. This, this is, is the chassis. <laughs> cool. So David stripped the car. David's putting it back together. Hundreds of man hours on it. But uh, the owner um, comes from uh, the Far East. So yeah. we've also modified to fit air conditioning. That's a, so that's another question. How far will you go in terms of changing an existing car? Whatever the owner wants. Okay. So if it's he their wanted, choice, it's their car. You've got drum brakes on this, so if you were Correct. to switch it over to disc brakes... He could have it if he wants. He would want... He, you could, if he, he wanted to. Now, but how far would you go in terms of not allowing certain things? Well, it's not our choice to not allow. Well, in, in We will advise of, and discuss. Okay. Um, if somebody turned around and said they wanted modern AP braking system on a, yeah. on a DB2, we may well turn around and say, yes, we're not sure that's going to work. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, it, it's the customer's choice. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's got an alternator now. So he's got a modern charging system. He's got air conditioning. Um, everything has been stripped, powder coated, replaced where necessary. Okay. Um, all the wiring looms are built in-house. So we make all new wiring looms to the car. Chassis has been powder coated. Mm -hmm. New fuel lines, new brake lines, new fuel tank, original fuel pump. Well, the gentleman's also having power steering. Mm -hmm. So he's cool. having e-steer, electronic power steering. Cool. Uh, and again, a lot of the purists will say, you can't do this. Do you know what, if he wants to drive the car every single day, because he can, um, why not? Mm -hmm. DB3S. Awesome. This car came into us from a, a relatively new owner. Um, came in for us to check it over, didn't think there was a huge amount wrong with it, but actually um, there was a lot of corrosion and some poor repairs that had happened in its life. Um, so we've had to replace the main tubes on the chassis. Wow. Um, and then the customer who intends to race it has asked us to rebody it, so we've built him a new body. Well, um, the original body we still hold, and he'll have that back at the end, so he has a spare just body for the car. Yeah. Um, we've also, the tonneau cover, when it came in was a leather one, we've now put it back to original factory specification, which were aluminium. Um, obviously this car had two doors, yeah. which they were never designed with, they only have one door, so we put it back to original specification. You know, you've got people who can literally go anywhere in the world. Yes, very much so, and, and we have done. So, so explain that process, someone calls up and if we have a customer or an individual has a vehicle where we don't have a dealer partner to assist uh, and obviously there's certain parts of the world where there aren't dealer partners, um, they can either go to the local dealer partner, whether it's on that continent or not, or they can contact us. Um, we'll put together a price for what it's going to take to do the work and then we'll fly our technicians wherever it needs to be. So those, are those technicians flying with their own tools and, and the equipment that would need or would they go uh, all, we, all we ask for is an equipped workshop, so a ramp, extraction, um, uh, lifting tools and equipment and so on. The rest of it, the guys will, will ship their hand tools. Fantastic. Yeah, very much so. And whether that's body work as well, so you know, if we've got somebody who's had a, a car that's been heavily damaged, and we need to send some of our panel technicians out there to cut out the damaged panels and bond in new ones, we've done that as well. So yeah, we, we try and offer as much flexibility as we can. We love showing people what we have here. It's, it's, it's unique and it's beautiful and we're very proud of what we've done. Um, and, and the reason Aston Martin's still going after 100 years is because of the passion of the people that work for it and the passion of the owners that have purchased the cars. Fantastic. It wouldn't exist otherwise.